Hey, this is Erica the Goober, and this is Marley. <laughs> you just got a treat. Ah. And this is a tutorial about how to color your sketches digitally in Photoshop. It's very important to take a good photograph or a scan of your drawing if you're going to color it digitally. I don't have a scanner, so I set up my sketchbook on my desk and I use my desk lamp for lighting. Sometimes I use my little uh, ring light that attaches to my desk to get a secondary light source so there's not a lot of uh, intense shadows. It's also important to have a good neutral light color because if you have it too like yellow, it could be kind of dingy looking and same thing with the um, too cool, but more so with the yellow, I think. It's also very important to not have your light directly on top of your sketch because graphite will create a glare. So here are the, some of the images I came up with. The top three are poorly lit. The light is too orange and it doesn't really capture the, the sketch very well. The two at the bottom are better as far as tone goes, but the one on the left has that glare that I was talking about, so that one's not going to work very well. So I think we're going to go with the one on the right. It has a nice contrast and the color is nice, but we still will have to make a few adjustments. So now that we have our photo ready, we can edit it. I always like to duplicate the layer first, um, so if I make any adjustments, I can go back and look at what I've done. But here I am pulling up the Levels menu, which is Command-L on Mac, but I like to mess with this and kind of adjust it so the sketch has a better contrast to it, but it's important not to blow out the whites, so you don't want it to be like that. Um, it's too bright and you lose your texture. I kind of see this um, like a yellow tone in here, so I'm going to bring up the color balance menu, so command B, and I'm going to kind of mess with that and you can slide towards blue to get rid of the yellow. Even after I made the level adjustments, you can see over here in this area there is um, kind of a shadow. So what I like to do to fix that is I take the gradient tool over here, um, make a new layer, make that white, and drag that. And then I mess with the, the layer properties. Um, so, let's see, soft light, the overlay looks better. And then you can adjust the opacity. I'm gonna go back and erase some of this very softly to get our sketch back, but you don't wanna do it too much. So I'm going to merge these layers, and then I'm going to duplicate this one again, and merge it. But now we are going to clean up some of this um, mess we have like around here, so like this kind of stuff and like eraser marks and things like that. What I also like to do so you can keep the texture is use the stamp, the clone stamp. So I'm going to click an area where there's um, the same kind of texture I want to bring over here and just go in and get rid of all this uh, stuff that I don't want in the drawing. Now we want to flip our canvas so we can make any adjustments with um, that we need to make. So I'm going to flip this um, so you can come up here, go to image, image rota rotation and flip canvas horizontally. So I see with this, her eye is kind of like drifting off like this way. So it's a little problematic. Uh, I'm going to liquefy this so I can move this around. So it's Shift Command X, and it'll bring up this little window. So you have your brush, and you can 
pull this down a little bit. That way changed it a lot. So I'm going to flip it back and that looks a lot better. Now we want to go in and darken up some of these lines. So I'm going to make a new layer and select a textured brush, like a pencil, so it matches your drawing. And then I'm going to come in, just kind of add some more dark lines in here. So I like to darken like underneath the chin, the corners of the mouth. So yeah, I'm going to set it to multiply on um, the layer properties and then I go from there and I can adjust the opacity later if I want to. But I'm going to go through and darken this for now. Additionally, I'm going to go and clean up some stuff. Some more stuff like on her face, around her eyes. There's a lot of, uh, lot of messiness in here. I've added all of these adjustments that I've made into a group and now I'm going to duplicate that group and merge it. So now we can um, mess with this one by itself. There are two ways you can go about coloring the sketch. You could just make a layer underneath the sketch and set the sketch to multiply and color underneath of it. Just take our brush and just go for it. And it works. It's fine. But I have a better way to do it. The way that I do it will allow you to color the lines of the sketch itself and your drawing will look more cohesive with the color. So what we're going to do is it gets a little complicated because it's a lot of like keys but you press shift control alt e then press you want to select the whole layer so command a will select all of it you want to copy this command c and then over here you want to go to your channels and you want to go down here to make a new alpha layer in the channels and you want to paste so control V then you want to hide this layer or actually you want to invert it so command I will invert it and then you want to reveal these layers again and hide the alpha layer and you want to go back to your layers tab over here, make a new layer, go up here to select, load selection, right? Yeah. And then under the channel, you want to go to alpha one, press OK, and then it will select the sketch. You want to pick, what I usually do is I pick a like a dark red color and use your fill tool to do this and now you have the sketch by itself but you have to go in and erase around well first I'm going to up the contrast a little bit this and then go back and I'm going to erase stuff around this When I'm coloring, the first thing I like to do is pick like a pink kind of tone and you want to color pretty much everything around the outside because you're going to want to fill it. Oh, okay, this is something very important that I forgot to mention. Sometimes it does this. I don't know why it does it after I do this color thing. But what I do is I switch my tool and then I go back to the brush that I was using and it fixes it. So I'm just going to continue coloring this and then I will show you how to easily change all the colors within it. All right, so you go to your layers. If you 
hold in between the two and press Alt or Option. Just click, it'll make your clipping mask. So now we're just gonna color this like you normally would, but you don't have to worry about going outside the lines or anything. So we're going to um, just start and kind of write some color down. But the thing to keep in mind is you want everything that is a different material on a different clipping mask. So I'll make another one. I'll clip it down and it'll still go on the base layer. So you wanna have everything on a separate layer. So I'm gonna do another one for her hair. But say we don't want it to be pink hair anymore, we can go in and just change this part. So I will go to, you can start by doing color balance if you'd like, and then you can just play around with that. Like do you want it to be a more red colored pink or do you want it to be blue toned? So I'm gonna cancel that. You can do it that way or you can go to your hue and saturation and you can completely just adjust the hue of everything. So yeah, so you can change it to whatever you want, but that's a really helpful thing when you're not really sure what colors you want to have in there. Or even if you are sure of the color, you might they might be a little bit off and you might need to change it. I'm going to lay down all the colors and then decide on the tones that I want. Now it's time to color the lines. To do that, we are going to do pretty much the same thing that we did with the color. So we're gonna make another layer and clip that to the sketch. Um, okay, so now we can take another color, say I'm gonna pick from this pink and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker and now I can just, um, I can just paint on top of this and it makes the line the same color. Now that I have the sketch colored and all of the lines colored, I can go back on top of it and clean up some things to finalize the drawing. The last thing I'm going to do is add noise to the drawing. So you go up to filter, noise, add noise, and you can adjust how grainy it is. But I like to do this just to give a little texture to the digital parts that I did. So it looks like the sketch and the digital painting part goes together. Yeah, and that's pretty much how I color my sketches. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more art tutorials, you should subscribe to my channel. This week's question is, do you prefer sketching traditionally or digitally? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.